The two films which you are about to see are the nightmarish accounts of how two groups of friends got hopelessly lost in the deep dark ocean. Originally from Ormond, Florida, Tamara, Daniel, Randy, and Christy were all young and in their early 20s. And in August of 1981, the four were planning a double day out to sea as just a way to have fun on what was Daniel's 17-foot catamaran. The group then went out about a mile from the coast, set up shop, and just enjoyed each other's company. That was at least until some rather ominous dark storm clouds started to roll in from the horizon. As they kept their eyes on it, they noticed how fast it was actually moving in and how it was being accompanied by very quick and furious lightning strikes. And by the time that they actually thought about doing anything about it, the storm was already on top of them and it was already too late to leave. They then decided to just take their chances and wait the storm out. As they did this though, their catamaran would end up taking a pretty bad beating from the storm, with one of the pontoons even filling up completely with water. So much so that about 10 to 15 minutes of continuous rainfall ended up making the small boat completely eventually capsize. As the boat flipped over, all four friends would end up being tossed into the ocean, but unfortunately, as Christy fell, she also managed to cut her leg on the pontoon which then immediately made everyone start thinking about a shark attack. Luckily, all four friends were able to quickly swim back to the boat and have enough room to pull their entire bodies out of the water. They then immediately started making sure everyone's spirits stayed up by reassuring each other that since it was still daylight out and that the storm had just passed, that there should be still more boats coming out and that they would be rescued soon. Unfortunately though, two hours quickly turned to six hours, and before they knew it, the sun was beginning to set. And to top it all off, they had no food or water, and the only thing that they had on them were the bathing suits that they were wearing. After about an hour had then passed, the four could begin hearing what sounded like a motor off in the distance. Daniel then jumped up with enthusiasm and screamed, that's a Coast Guard cutter. Then, as fast and loud as possible, the four jumped up and began to wave their hands and scream and whistle to get his attention. Then, perhaps in an attempt to listen for any screams in the quiet ocean, the boat cut its engine, so our four friends began to become even more excited in the thought that they were being rescued. Then suddenly, without warning, the Coast Guard's boat started its engines back up and started to sail back towards the coast. The four, almost dumbfounded, then just sat there quietly, not saying a single word to each other as if they were all accepting their fate and just taking their horrific situation in. As night finally came around, the four struggled to get any sleep and were mainly just thinking about hunger and not falling into the water below, as they weren't too confident as to what may actually be swimming below. And unfortunately, because they were at the mercy of the sea, they would end up drifting out another nine miles before the next day. Then, as the sun rose up the next day, Tamara remembered thinking to herself they may not get another chance to swim back to shore as they would most likely lose their direction if they waited until later in the day. And so after conferring with each other that this would be their best bet at survival, the four then comforted each other and with their last hope jumped into the water with Tamara in the lead. At first everything was going pretty good. That was until after about an hour into the swim, Christy would begin to scream and yell for Randy to come back and help. And at first Tamara thought that she must just be tired or having trouble swimming, so she turned around and yelled, just float for a bit if you have to. But as she turned around to see what was happening, she remembers seeing Christy thrashing around like in the movie Jaws. Then suddenly out of nowhere, Tamara remembers seeing Christy's body go straight up and out of the water then straight back down with terrifying force, and immediately knew that she was being attacked by a shark, but Randy, not seeing the actual beast under the waves, thought that she was only drowning. So then he began swimming closer towards her and started yelling her name. All the while, Christy was yelling back, come and get me now, while still being grabbed and forced up and down multiple times. Unfortunately though, by the last time the shark had brought her back down to the water, Tamara could see that Christy was completely pale and had no more fight left, meaning that she was all but certain to be dead already. Then thinking to herself that there was absolutely nothing else that she could do to help, Tamara made the decision to turn around and keep swimming forward. After about 10 to 15 minutes though, she began feeling something bumping into her legs as she swam. As she looked down, her blood began to run cold as her worst case scenario was now swimming right under her. 
a massive gray white shark almost the size of a car then thinking to herself just to stay calm she then switched to a backstroke and slowly kept going forward then after about 15 to 20 minutes of nothing happening and not knowing whether it was still under her or not she then had to switch back from her backstroke as the current was so bad now that if she stopped it would immediately force her to swim north east or south instead of west where she wanted to go and now having swam for over five long hours she also unfortunately lost track of her other two male friends daniel and randy but knowing how insanely quiet it was around her, she found solace in the fact that she had yet to hear any screams coming from behind her. Then as a few more hours would pass by, she would begin to see something off in the horizon. It was multiple sharks, and they were in what looked like an all-out feeding frenzy. And even more terrifying than that, the incredibly strong current was now forcing Tamara towards the frenzy without any mercy. Luckily though, she was able to catch a south heading current which guided her safely around. As she kept swimming, all she could really remember was from time to time she would start hallucinating. Luckily though, it was never anything too significant as she mainly only was thinking that she was seeing a boat off in the distance or planes in the sky, all the while occasionally singing songs to herself to keep herself going. A little later as she was still swimming, she then remembered looking up to the sky and already being a little disoriented from the sun. She saw a small thin cloud in the sky that was pointing from east to west. Thinking that this must be a sign, she then switched back to the backstroke and began to follow it the rest of the way home. Then finally, after another two hours of swimming, she was at last near the coast. And still feeling as though she could make it into safety, when suddenly out of nowhere, she began to be forced back by a 26 mile per hour undertow. And no matter how hard she tried, she just couldn't break it to finish swimming in. And all the while, she could fully see the beach and lifeguard, which by this time felt like they were both on a completely different planet altogether. Then, as she almost gave up and let the tide just wash her back out to sea, she began to sidestroke as hard as she could, and by the grace of God, was finally able to break through. As she finally got past the difficult part of the undertow, she then began to yell and whistle, which miraculously finally got the attention of the lifeguard, who then came out running as fast as he could to help out. And as soon as Tamara saw him, she immediately told him what had happened and that her friend had been killed by a shark and that she had two other friends that were behind her, but that she didn't know if they, they were okay or not. Tamara was then rushed to the nearest hospital where she only suffered dehydration, exhaustion, and sunburn but other than that was completely healthy and probably one of the luckiest people on earth. A few hours later, the Coast Guards were then able to find Daniel, still alive, washed ashore only five miles away from where Tamara was found. While Randy was rescued still swimming at sea, luckily both mainly only suffered hypothermia, but other than that were both ultimately fine. Unfortunately though, Chrissy's body was never found and remains lost at sea to this day. Originally from the small fishing town of Port Aronson, Texas, best friends Tricell, James, and Kurt were working as professional fishermen to make a living. And on one particular night in August of 2009, they decided it would be a great idea to get some night fishing in in order to make a little extra money for each of their families. They then decided to take their 23 foot boat to their favorite fishing spot as to not take any chances of having a poor catch from their trip, which was about 80 miles offshore near an old oil rig, because of all the lights that they had which made fishing easier for the three friends. The ocean was also unusually calm that night, so the three thought to themselves that it might be a good idea to just let the boat drift near the oil rig, thinking to themselves the worst that could happen was that they might drift away a few hundred feet at worst. Then, after a while of actual fishing, the three would begin to drink a bit and celebrate the catch that they just caught. Then, a little later, it would be about 11 or 12 o'clock at night when the group would decide to go ahead and get some sleep and lay down on the beanbags that they brought with them to sleep on. As they all slept though, their boat would end up drifting almost 5 miles away from the oil rig. Then, about an hour after the group had fallen asleep, Tricell was slightly woken up from his beanbag being moved around from the waves below. His beanbag was swaying back and forth, and when it got to the point of slamming up against a railing, Tricell was finally woken fully up, with water coming in all the way to his knees. Awake and fully alarmed now, Tricell rushed over to wake up James, immediately yelling, There's water on the boat! Which James then responded, still sleeping, That's because we're on the ocean, fool. 
Tricell thought it was funny in the moment, but once James actually thought about what Tricell had actually said, he jumped up and said, Oh my god, there's water on the boat. What are we going to do now? As it turned out, there was a bilge pump failure causing seawater to flood into the boat. The two then woke up Kurt and ran to the back of the boat to check on the twin motors, which only made them panic more as the boat was already sitting at a large tilt and one of the motors was fully submerged in the water by this time. Kurt then ran to the radio and tried to make a distress call to the Coast Guard before it was too late. But horrifically, within the short span of just 30 seconds, before they could even get a response back, the boat kept tilting and tilting all the way till finally it capsized over. Now full on panicking, the three found themselves in the ocean surrounded by pitch black darkness with nothing but the moonlight to light their way. And not wanting anything to attack them from the dark abyss below, the three then raced as fast as they could to get back on their overturned boat. Which by this time, unfortunately, only six feet of the 23 foot long boat was sticking out which meant two of the men had to then jump on the pontoons to stick out of the water. Luckily as well, one of the men had also grabbed a flare just before the boat capsized, which they then set off in the hopes that someone would see it in the pitch black darkness to rescue them. The three then sat in complete silence as they waited for someone to try to come and rescue them. Unfortunately though, as morning finally came around, the reality of not getting rescued finally hit them. So then for the next few minutes, they then looked around to see what they may have still on hand that may help them out. As expected though, everything that could have helped them out went overboard as the boat capsized. Everything that was except for three gallons of water, two bags of chips, a package of six individual crackers, three cases of beer, and a pack of bubble gum. So at the very least, they wouldn't die of thirst or hunger, at least for a little bit. As time went on, the three would become a bit more optimistic as periodically barges, boats, and helicopters would all pass them by. So to get their attention, they first would take off their bright orange life jackets and wave them around. But when that ultimately failed, they then tore off the railing from the side of the boat and tied off one of their t-shirts to the end of it and waved it around for as physically long as they were able to, but again, to no avail. Then, to keep their thoughts off of the negativity around them and to keep their hopes as high as possible, they then took the rest of the day to talk about being rescued, what they were going to eat when they got back, and whose wife would most likely be the maddest upon their return. As the sun came up the next day though, the three would wake up to an absolutely nightmarish sight. The sky and ocean were completely empty. As they looked around as far as I could see, they no longer saw a single barge, boat, or helicopter. They could only see water and sky for miles. Then, as the situation that they were in started to sink in, they began to set up an eating schedule of a handful of chips or a few crackers a day, with one beer in the morning and one beer at night, with a sip of water every so often to stay hydrated. And on top of that, they also ate the gum during the day to help take their minds off of how hungry they actually were. Then, as the third and fourth day came around, the main problem had become the terrible heat as the average day temperature had kept soaring past 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So then, in order to stay cool from getting any worse sun blisters than they already had, the three would periodically spend the day in the ocean to cool off. Every once in a while, the three would even sleep in the water by strapping their life vests to their heads as to not drown. Though on the night of the fourth day, as Tressel was sleeping in the ocean, he would begin to feel something touching his legs. Not thinking too much about it though, due to his exhaustion, he just ignored it and fell back asleep. As morning came around on the fifth day though, Tressel woke up to another nightmarish sight, as both of his legs were now covered completely in jellyfish tentacles. And unfortunately, not knowing the proper way of removing the tentacles, he just started ripping them off, which as expected released all the venom sending Tressel into a whirlwind of absolute pain. Luckily though, he was able to get back out of the water and onto the overturned boat, which slightly helped with his pain. Then a few hours later, they would be hit with the harsh reality that they had all finally ran out of food. Knowing that they were at least in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico though, they at least knew that they could try fishing and stay strong that way. As they were looking down into the ocean, they could clearly see up to about 60 feet down. As they were looking down though, they would see a few black figures swimming around that looked like about the size of a lunchbox. And at first, they didn't really think too much of it, but as the figures began swimming closer, the guys noticed that it was actually a group of sharks the entire time. Then, as the sharks swam right up to the boat, the guys could clearly see that there were at least six to seven great whites. And knowing that prey was only mere feet away, the sharks stayed around and circled the boat the rest of the day. 
Then a few hours later, almost as if they were there specifically for them, a pack of dolphins came out of nowhere and chased away the sharks, as well as every other fish that was around the boat. The dolphins then hung around the boat for about an hour, then as quickly as they came, they left. Then the three remember hearing nothing but calm seas for hours after, as they knew that they were completely alone again. Then as the sixth day came around, the three men were beginning to hallucinate from the harsh sun and lack of food. The entire day, one of the men would accuse the other two of eating all the pizza or something else that they had thought that they had ordered. The other two would then laugh about it, but then 10 or 15 minutes later, the cycle would continue and someone new would accuse the others of stealing. Luckily though, nothing physical ever came from these interactions. Then after about a week of searching, the Coast Guard would announce that they were calling off the search and our three friends, without telling each other, would start to slowly, one by one, lose hope in being saved. Then on the eighth day, the three would make a decision to abandon their boat and try their best to swim to a distant oil rig that they were at a week ago. They were all scared out of their minds that they knew that this would be a long shot, as they all knew that once they started, there was no turning back to find the boat. It would all be all or nothing. Then, almost like an angel was sent down from heaven, James yelled out, There's a boat coming for us! At first, no one believed him, but then as a few minutes passed by, they then all started seeing the same boat coming for them. And before they knew it, they were all being rescued and giving their names to the Coast Guard in one of the luckiest rescues in history, as they were all found almost 183 miles from shore. And as about as lucky as they could have gotten, they all suffered no serious injuries. And let this be a lesson to all of you, if you ever found yourself in the ocean, make sure you have a backup plan, because these boats seem to always capsize. And once again, thank you for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe buttons and turn on the notification bell for more content in the future. Goodbye for now.